just going to show you how to make a corsage. Now we've got some hellebores, diosma, some leaves, um, Singapore orchids, show you some of the wiring techniques. This is a 0.5 wire. Just going to put this into a hairpin. I'm just taking that into a fairly tight hairpin. Leave the bottom open. Just take this off the end of the orchid. Now there are different methods, but this is one. If you go in to the slightly to the right at the base of the orchid, open up and go back to the left. That'll pull the wire right down and it'll anchor in. And we're going to take our parafilm, and this needs to stretch. Lock in that stem, because that air locks it, and then tape. Now as we stretch, you'll see the parafilm, see how I'm stretching that out? And therefore you'll make the most of your parafilm and have neat mechanics. So there's an orchid there. If we're going to do one of the hellebores, these little tiny ones, again we'll take our wire, we're going to do what is known as a pierce and mount. So through, return, press, and tape. Try and keep your wire nice and straight and therefore it's out of the way as far as your taping goes. Just come back up there to the top. It'll lock onto itself if you press it around. So there's the hellebore. Now the diosma, if we, we, I suppose with this one, if it was, um, if it needed more support, if you came in right up here, pull the wire in and then down and tape it, it allows us manipulation because the wire is there. Now if you were using Lily of the Valley, you'd actually go down between the florets. If we're using tryptamine, you'd wire it like I'm doing this with the diosma. That allows you total control with regard to the movement. So we put that down. I've made a little bow. Some people like bows, some people don't. It's a good little filler. And with regard to the leaves, take our wire. We're going to do what is known as a stitch, midway up on the leaf. Just nick it by the backbone. Return the wire down. You can do a twist if you want to around the stem. So make sure you do leave a little bit of stem. And then we take our parafilm and tape. There we go. We could have used the other side of that leaf too. It's quite attractive. All right, so we're ready to construct. So preparation done. So we'll start with a leaf base. Do you have to have leaves? The answer is no. Um, but most florists actually do. It creates a foundation. And we're starting with the smallest of the leaves and working into a junction. Now that's actually a smaller one there. So that's the smallest. So smallest are going towards what we refer to as the top of the corsage. And watch this. Into the thumb, index finger, and over. Now the size of this is determined by the size of the corsage that you're going to make. So depending on your flower content. Now often six leaves are used. But in this instance, I'm going to go in and add a few more. And I'm keeping the centre fairly tight. There's a reason for that. It makes it a lot easier for us as far as our construction is concerned. So we have a diamond shape if I hold it up this way. Now I'll lift that out of the way. And I'm just going to put a little bit of tape just to hold those central mechanics together. And that just stops things from moving around once it's taped in. Round we go with the tape. So very easy just to, to reshape now. So we've got them coming upwards, coming out, but make sure that you're not too wide. It should be elongated. Now we'll pop in some of the diosma and we're working towards the top again, back towards the base. It's creating a nice little line across. And you can also use this as a filler. Now if we were going to use a bow, and I probably won't with this one, but if we were, I'll just put this in so that you can see. We would use this as a base right down in the centre like that. Now some people like that for the extra colour, some don't. It's just personal taste. 
So I'm going to use the diosma. So I'm just feeding through. A little word of advice too, if you're using diosma and a person is either asthmatic or they suffer with hay fever, then this is perhaps not the flower to use because it can cause those little allergens to flare up. Right, so I'm going to put this orchid through and that is actually going to be our focal bloom. Okay, that's in position. Now we have a smaller orchid which is going to go up above it. So that's coming in here. And I'm turning that lip to actually face in towards the centre. So that's flowing like that. And you can put one at the other end if you choose. It's not necessary. And in fact we could even have the bow coming in in that area there if we wanted to. So just take that wire through. So that now makes the corsage larger. We need to sit that flower down just a little bit. So I'm just reshaping these leaves just a bit. So that gives us an orchid looking in, an orchid looking in there, and then our focal. So sitting there like that. Now with the hellebores, just a nice little bit of lightness coming through. We're just going to place those literally around. See those coming in? And that gives us a nice little bit of relief. I'm going to come right in into those mechanics so that you can't see into there. They're coming in there. And I'm going to do the same on this side here. So feeding through to our central mechanics. There we go. See that there? Now, I'm just going to take that. So here's our mechanics. Now you can put a leaf at the back if you wish to cover your mechanics. And I'll just put this tape on so you can see. I'm just taping that down. So there's your back mechanics there. And if we wish to camouflage that, we could wire up a leaf or two. And you can place a leaf just to cover and tape it in. Alternatively, if you're not using pins, a magnet can be placed here. These can be purchased through your sundry houses. That can be placed there and a magnet can go under the fabric and attach here with parafilm over it. If you decide to glue, don't glue alone, still parafilm over. And the shank is generally cut level with the base leaf. Now if you cut like that, do make sure that you seal over at the end so that there's no rough wires, nothing sharp, everything is concealed. Now just finally, with regard to our central flower, I'm just going to take a couple of these hellebores, just slightly different in size. I've got some Oasis adhesive glue, and I'm just going to put that around. Now, it should I should wait for it to actually just become more pliable, but I'm going to put those into the centres of the blooms. Now that glue will hold it there, and there was actually a little mark, which I will show you. You see that little brown mark there? That's a sign of refrigeration. So I'm camouflaging that, because the orchid will certainly last, but those little touches some people would like, some people don't. Um, it's just individual taste. This is a more formal corsage. So to finish, we just bring these back to the body. So in other words, back towards the shank. Check that top leaf that it's flowing. And just another little trick with regard to the side placements here. If they do become too wide, you can actually turn the leaf, so I'll just put that down. You can actually turn the leaf like that 
if you want them to be narrower. And if a leaf is too long, just watch this. If it's too long, cut from the bottom, not shaping from the top. Come up like that. And then that's ready to wire. So you still have the nice shape of the leaf. That's a little handy tip. So there's our corsage made with diosma, hellebores, Singapore orchids and um, suitable leaves. So I hope you enjoy watching that and enjoy making them. And if you want more details, my book, The Skill of Flower Arranging, sets out all sorts of different examples for you to see. Thank you very much.